Today's movie is called Boarding House, so I sure hope your liver is ready for some house establishing shots. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling John Wintergate's cult horror flick, Boarding House. Released in 1982, Boarding House has historical significance for apparently being the first horror film shot on video. The print was later blown up for theatrical release, but this low-budget labor of love was initially shot on basic consumer-grade home video equipment from the era. And it shows. Even more confounding is that the film was initially planned as a horror comedy, but the distributor insisted they release it as a straight horror film which made recutting the film, which was full of comedic elements, challenging. But enough about that. Can Boarding House kill enough nubile starlets to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Chris Eplett, Joe Esposito, and Paul Forbes. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in the description below. And now... Let's get bloody. We open up right on the title card, and I'm glad we're not wasting any time. I think they might have hired the same company who did the one for Sledgehammer. Honestly, they probably should have let it dry first. It's just dripping all over the place. Oh god, are we downloading the credits on a 28k modem? I sure hope no one calls us in the middle or we'll have to start the whole thing over. You kids probably don't even remember the struggle at dial-up internet. Starring Colossu, which sounds like a Star Trek villain. The one name thing works for some people, like Madonna, but I'm not sure Colossu is on quite the same level. Also, she was director John Wintergate's wife. I guess we should also point out that this was a shot on video film blown up for theatrical release, so the print quality here is a bit rough. I mean, I haven't seen this many scratch marks since I had chicken pox in second grade. Theme music courtesy of the Casio keyboard you begged for in 1987 and then never used. <laughs> music by Colossu, 33 and a third, and Jonama. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that would have been better as Jenema. Two cinematographers for a shot on video movie? <laughs> I'm calling bullshit. Screenplay by Jenema as well which may be fitting, really. Directed by John Wintergate. Come on, John, stop hogging all the ends. You don't need two of them there. Save some for the Keenans of the world. The fuck is he talking about? Sweet, the credits finally finished downloading. Run, eh? Trust me, I'd love to run away from this movie already. I guess we're just gonna watch ChatGPT write the script. I feel like someone definitely missed the show don't tell section of their creative writing course here. I mean, all of this sounds like my kind of jam, and it would be nice if I could see it instead of reading it off of this trash 80 screen. Jesus, we're still typing the backstory. War Games was about a computer and didn't waste this much time making me read shit off of a computer screen. Hell yeah, straight to the house establishing shot. Probably should have focused before press and record. Help, I've fallen and I can't get up. Are life alert bracelets waterproof? Great, someone bled on the tape again. Turns out this was a William Castle-esque gimmick called Horror Vision. When this appeared on screen, audiences would know something gory or disturbing was about to happen. Anyway, Grandpa's breaststroke could definitely use some work. And back to the house establishing. Ah, uh, what the hell, let's throw in a moon establishing shot too. Even though it was just broad daylight. Inside, we have problems. Honey, did you clog the disposal again? How many times have I told you to stop shitting in the sink? Not gross. She's gonna clear this clog by hand. If you guessed this thing was suddenly gonna start working while her hand was in there, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. Oh, come on. Back to the computer? What the hell, movie? We get it. People keep dying in this house. All right, here are my production notes. Cut out all of that computer screen shit for starters. Oh, wow. Sting just bought the house, apparently. It's no, not the wrestler, the singer. Then we jump over here to these people we don't know. It's like a Steve Perry song. Sherry, what's wrong? Clearly, her lines have been written on the sleeve of his shirt. Do you believe in, in evil, in, in evil powers, thoughts? Evil thoughts? Kind of I'd like to gut you like a fish and wear your intestines as garters? Wait, did I say that out loud? Well, at least this movie had the budget for some performance-enhancing drugs. <laughs> nice framing. Two cinematographers and they still chopped his head off in the shot. 
All right, to be fair, this is not so much the cinematographer's fault, but mostly because they blew up the video version for the theatrical release. I'm no cinematographer, but the SOV version was shot in 133.1, and then it was converted to 185.1 for the theatrical. They had to crop the image for that, and this is what you get. No idea why they didn't just screen it theatrically in the original aspect ratio, because it looks better. Please, someone, take these script pages. I'm begging you. So, I just stick the trend in my butt, and then I go lift and get huge? Got it. Oh, sure, let's stop and try on some new scarves. I mean, it's still better than the computer screen crap. <laughs> oh, Sherry, indeed. Sherry's dead, but this dude just expects her to keep working. Sherry, the release papers, where are they? <laughs> That's capitalism, baby. And here comes a great moment in horror film acting. This is exactly the kind of chest I was hoping we'd open in this movie. All right, bring in the fog machine. House establishing shot. Um, let's just hold this shot for a while. Maybe something cool will happen. Oh, okay. Back to the house, I guess. Apparently, Sting is gonna cover one of Motley Crue's greatest hits. Girls, girls, girls. So basically, this dude is starting one of those online streamer houses full of strippers. Ten rooms, hundred dollars a month. Seems crazy cheap. Two cinematographers. And they still lit this scene from the back. House establishing shot. Just in case you forgot, we just walked inside the house. Look, Rock and Roll Nightmare's house establishing shot record could be about to fall. Sweet, we've got a rockin' theme song. Oh, you never felt this way before. Ian Sarah, what do you make of this? It stinks. Starting to feel like this might have been more appropriately titled as Boring House. Boy, Lex Luger sure was tiny when he was off cycle. Come on, movie, focus. No idea what the point of any of that last scene was, but now he's busy listening to his new Tony Robbins personal power cassettes. Focus your mind on the object that you wish to move. Concentrate. Jesus, I knew Sting was into the whole tantric sex thing, but I had no clue I was going to have to watch him prepare. So I guess this is as good a time as any to point out that this is director John Wintergate. <laughs> he took the lead under the name Hawk Adley. And frankly, I wouldn't want anyone to know this was me either. This is my pooping face. And he's psychic. Or they're having an earthquake. But this is interrupted by his landlord. Sting, are you moving objects with your mind in there again? No, ma'am. Look, Sting, it's the fifth. I'm gonna need you to slide the rent check under my door by the end of the afternoon. This guy looks like a cross between Carl Malden and Coach Bear Bryant. You kids even remember Carl Malden and Coach Bear Bryant? Christ, I'm old. Over in a totally unrelated movie. Hey, you guys! Well, I guess. I don't think you really did anything special, but sure. <laughs> what the hell is this? Early Randy Savage cosplay, maybe? More like Randy Tame, if you ask me. I will say it's awesome no one bothered to mic this chick for her dialogue scene, though. Hi! Hi! You moving in, too? Yeah, I'm Randy. I'm Victoria. I'll help you in a minute, okay? Anyway, we've got one more potential victim showing up. My name is Debbie. Um, I'm inquiring about the ad in the newspaper. I'm oh, this is like what would happen if we put Kelly Bundy in nerd glasses. Anyway, later on, this chick is stroking her cat. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. This actual cat. Whoa, D. Snyder. D. must have had a tour date with Twisted Sister because he's about to exit this movie. Hey, you know why the blonde didn't want to take the ice pick out of the freezer? She was afraid it would melt. Oh yeah, Dee will never rock a mic again. But this does look like the rare instance where Dee is actually going to take it. Great, the cameraman is lost again. Oh yeah, the cream rises to the top. Turns out he's just here to trim her bush. Hell yeah. No, I mean because he has gardening shears. Settle down. Bo Derek's competition. What happened to you? That wacko gardener, he jumped out of the bushes. And I found him. Hmm, I've definitely heard there are P-Hub videos that start this way. Again, let's take a moment to enjoy this framing. The whole top half of the frame is basically empty. Um, I forgot my line. Little help? Hey, gratuitous shower scene, ahoy. We haven't had one of those in ages. I guess Linnea Quigley must have been booked already. Jesus, no woman would ever get into a shower like this. The grout is disgusting. She's probably going to get scabies, athlete's foot, and MRSA from being in there. So, we went from shots too far away from the actors to shots way too close. Keep at it, guys. You've almost figured it out. 
And I don't even know what the hell this is. I will say it's giving me flashbacks to the end of Rats, Knights of Terror, and Troll 2, though. Oh my god! And of course this is all a hallucination, but let's just roll with it. And by roll with it, I mean jump to another movie. Christ, I wish this thing would pick a plot and stick with it. Discount Rob Lowe is here to drink wine and convince you to switch to DirecTV, apparently. Not gonna lie, I've seen better student films than this thing so far. Jesus, the voiceover narration is pure amateur hour. Well, I guess I'll have to call Detective Harris again. You did a good job for me last time. Well, I guess I better pay my taxes today. Sweet, is this pool party at Seymour Butts' place? If you know that movie, you're an old perv. And I salute you. Holy shit, my eyes. I'm gonna need bleach after the leopard print speedo. Jesus, where was Horror Vision to warn me about this? But I'm gonna need even more eye bleach because he's hooking up with Five Below Kelly Bundy. This is one of the rare times in my life where it's like, please, let's just keep this a PG-rated sex scene. And from there to the airport. Why? Your guess is as good as mine. Oh, it's so we can hear some more crappy music. And Sarah? It stinks. Also, was that song's lyric, you've been begging to get into my pants? Oh yeah, I gotta get this bad boy back to Smith's Grove Sanitarium before anyone notices it's missing. Meanwhile, Cowboy Dahmer finds his next victim. Mom, can you come pick me up? The girls pushed me into the pool with my clothes on. Oh God, he's calling this dude. Maybe all these random terrible scenes are finally gonna join forces to make a terrible movie. I am here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of bubble gum. This dude wishes he was Piper. Back inside, a random dude is about to experience some shocking developments. And Quentin Tarantino checks out the goods. Since nothing's really happening, we might as well get in a quick nine holes. This is like Dorf on golf. I'm sure it's gonna come as a shock to all of you that this scene serves no real purpose, which is a recurring theme so far. With the movie going nowhere, this lady decides it's time to consult the script. Huh, it just says, keep inserting random scenes until we hit 87 minutes. Oh god, now he's doing magic tricks. <laughs> At least it was soap rising up and not fart bubbles or his junk. Hey, you know what would really liven things up? More random voiceover exposition. I hope those painters don't take too long with my room. Oh, uh, hold on, we've got a chainsaw. This might be about to get better. Oh yeah, I like where this is headed. Topless girl in a hot tub, dude with chainsaw, getting strong pieces vibes here. And a full GI shot. Aw, oh, come on, nothing happens. What the hell movie? Jesus, you have one reason for existing and you can't even get that right. But hey, we haven't established this house in a while. Oh look, I can't believe it's not Jim Kelly just showed up in this thing. Naturally, they couldn't keep the top of his afro in the frame. But things are picking up because this chick is about to get boned. Hell yeah. No, no, not like that. By this skeleton hand. Oh man, this is about to turn into one of those my hot stepmom got stuck under the bed videos, isn't it? Fortunately, it doesn't go that route, but we do get this jump scare. <laughs> I have no idea what this even is. I've also stopped caring. And now she's running through a cemetery. Yeah, I got nothing. I guess the upside here is this shot is better framed. Now it's just the lighting that sucks. Hey, it's Pigsy from Manhunt. Man, if they spent more than $6 making this movie, they way overpaid. Say what you will, but this guy is a real dead lay. And of course, this is all just football practice. This chick really can not scream though. <coughs> then, totally apropos of nothing, this happens. Shit. Yeah, pretty much sums up boarding house right there. But wait, he's gonna give us another great moment in horror film acting. Hey, what is this gun? It's for protection. Been uneasy lately. I would also like to point out that if you think the plot here is confusing, it's not because I'm not sharing the details with you, it's because there is no plot to this movie. Boarding House is a series of nonsensical scenes spliced together into a barely coherent film. But hey, things are looking up. Trish Stratus and Terry Runnels are having a hot tub bathing suit match. By God, stop the match before someone drowns! Pretty okay JR today. 
Well, I guess this disproves the whole guns don't kill people, people kill people thing. Meanwhile, Lex Luger and Miss Elizabeth enjoy a day at the beach. And they're having sex on the beach. Hell yeah. Yeah, exactly like that. Definitely not the drink. But it appears they're about to get stoned. Hell yeah. No, not like that. With an actual rock. I mean, look, he totally deserved a rock to the head for the leopard print speedo. Please, for the love of Christ, can we get one shot in this print of the movie framed properly? I mean, there were fewer chopped off heads during the French Revolution. So, you may be wondering why I can't believe it's not Marissa Tomei here as suddenly psychic. And look, I have no clue either. Oh yeah, I totally forgot that one of the 8 million subplots of this movie is there's a band coming for the big party. Here they are. Must be Camper von Beethoven. House establishing shot. Even though we never really left the house. Back inside, it looks like Marissa here is about to get swept away. You know, because she's vacuuming. Hey, where'd the movie go? Wait, maybe we can use this black screen as cover to escape early. Damn it, it's back. This is California, I think. Probably just a rolling brown out. Oh look, it's Eyes Without a Face. Man, I wish I was watching Eyes Without a Face right now. Your monster, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Mucinex Spokesbooker. And like everything else in this stupid movie, this goes nowhere. But later that night, she takes a load to the face. Hell yeah. Yeah, that was pretty close, Danny, but I think that's yogurt. A for effort, though. I will say the Annabelle Chong cosplay is on point. Have you ever heard of the yogurt facial? No, never heard of it. Everyone's doing that. And another gratuitous shower scene. <laughs> I've never been so grateful for frosted shower doors. I suppose this hammering the kitten scene is a metaphor of some sort. <laughs> Looks like Schrodinger's cat is definitely dead, though. Then this happens. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine at this point. Let's just put our heads down and get through this thing. Oh wait, it's just more football practice. Um, honey, you probably don't want to open that. It's definitely not a dick in a box. Man, she's really not happy about this. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Linda Day George, show her how to do it. Bastard! Hey, maybe this movie is finally going to get on track. And now it's party time. Someone's fingering some balls. Hell yeah. Now these billiard balls. And Marissa's got a guest. Somebody's outside in a red Ferrari. Oh, that must be my agent. Agent? You should sue him for letting you take a part in this movie. And now Carl Malden is basically Larry from Newhart. Do you kids even remember Larry, his brother Daryl, and his other brother Daryl? It's the second Christ I'm old today. Party's over, ladies. The fuzz is here. I really wish they'd shown up with a court order to shut down this movie. Okay, there's 14 minutes left in this thing, and I've given up all hope of it coming together and making sense. But thank God Officer Exposition is here just to reiterate all the shit we read on a computer screen an hour ago. Ten years ago tonight, Mr. and Mrs. Hoffman died at a party here. It's things like... I should name my band the police because this dude is super helpful. Great, let's just stop the whole last act for a crappy song from 33 and a third. Cops like, this is terrible. I'm writing a citation for noise pollution. That's really not enough though. And yeah, I'd probably just shoot the sound system to get away from this song too. Except he accidentally shoots this random lady. Man, his captain is going to be so pissed. Dude's going to be on desk duty for at least six months now. And the audience cheers. Because the song is over. Oh, hey, remember Macho Man Randy Tame? <laughs> yeah, he's still in this movie. I'm coming to save you, Elizabeth. <laughs> or not. Oh, no. Meanwhile, Dee Snyder is pissed about the opening act. Okay. It's not all right. Yeah. No, it's not all right. Drink. I don't want to drink. Yeah, Dee doesn't want to drink. He wants to rock. Look, man, we're not going to take it anymore. And now it looks like D's got the DTs. There's a cool popped out eyeball shot here, but no way we can show it. But it's there. Oh, sweet, he made blood pudding. And now we're ready for the ending. I know you've all just been dying to figure out who the killer is. And if you guessed bargain bin Kelly Bundy, nice work. If you won't give me your heart willingly, then I shall take it. Man, this new music video looks sweet. Pretty good Skeletor impression, too. I have the power. Clearly, she's a real heartbreaker. 
Turns out this is all just some Electra Complex shit, which is pretty gross. And now she's gonna have a psychic showdown with Sting. Is it wrong that I hope both of their heads explode like in scanners? Say what you will, but John Michael Thor is looking great. And after a bunch of screaming, she just vanishes? Christ, this movie couldn't even be bothered to give us an actual ending. Oh good, computer screen epilogue. Sweet, destroyed on my 10th birthday. It would have been the best gift ever if I could go back to 1982 and destroy all the prints of this film as a gift to myself. And of course, Deborah's body was never found. But the biggest bullshit moment here is that 33 and a third became a famous band. I'm not buying that at all. And cue credits. Hey, the director was not only the star, but he was Macho Man too. So, what have we learned from Boarding House? Hell if I know. If you held a gun to my head and made me explain this film, I'm as good as dead. What's really weird about this one is that the AFGA Blu-ray puts the shorter theatrical cut front and center. As mentioned, that version is cropped in a way that makes a lot of the shots look really terrible, and it's a grainy transfer. The actual shot on video cut is buried in the extras, but looks better and is 10 minutes longer. Which is actually not a plus, but at least some of the framing is slightly better than what you just saw. If I had it to do over again, I'd have done the SOV version instead. But enough about that. Because really, who cares? No matter which version you pick, Boarding House is one giant whiskey tango foxtrot of a movie. But can it conjure up enough splatter to fill five barf bags? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Boarding House is kinda middle of the road. We're treated to ice pick stabbings, one hammered stuffed cat, popped out eyeballs, a weird monster hallucination, and some other odds and ends. The gore is cheap and not super plentiful for a shot on video flick, but there's just enough splatter here to give Boarding House a respectable three barf bag rating. It's not the sickest flick, but it is a historical oddity. Looking for another low budget shot on video gore flick? Then be sure to check out my review of Sledgehammer. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.